Today in our 2010 Ford Explorer, we'll be installing the Concha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885, in conjunction with the e-trailer universal installation kit for brake controllers, part number ETB-C7. To start, we'll first go ahead and assemble the seven pole adapter bracket. With the hardware provided, we'll use it to attach the bracket to the seven pole adapter. We'll go ahead and take the bracket, feed it over the wires and up to the back of the mounting surface for the seven pole adapter. Then we'll take the screws, feed them through the front side of the seven pole and secure it with the nuts on the back side. Once we have all four in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. I'm gonna go ahead and take some black electrical tape and wrap up eight to 10 inches of our wire. This will assist in bundling our wires together and help protect it from the elements. Next, we'll go ahead and attach the draw tight, no drill mounting bracket, part number 18136. Using the fasteners provided with the bracket, we can secure it to the seven pole bracket. Now, we'll go ahead and take the purple wire, which in this application will not be used, and cut it off. We'll then take our wires and run them through our no-drill mounting bracket, and then mount the bracket to the hitch using the worm clamp provided. Then we'll take our previously installed four pole flat end and clip off the cover. Then we'll install our new connector in line with this one. We'll be using some Edelman dielectric grease, part number 11755, between our two connection points to help prevent moisture creating corrosion over time. I'll take a long zip tie and wrap it around the two ends to give it a firm and locked connection point. To connect the grade duplex cable to our seven pole connector, we'll strip back the grade duplex sheathing, then the two wires inside. We'll connect the white wire to the blue wire from our seven pole connector, and then we'll use the black wire from the gray duplex cable to match up with the black wire from our seven pole connector. We'll wrap the entire connection with electrical tape to protect it from outside elements and help bundle up our wires to clean up our install look. I'm gonna go ahead and take some additional tape and wrap the white ground wire to our gray duplex cable. Next, we'll go ahead and take the self-tapping screw provided with our install kit and secure it here to the frame, grounding our new seven pole connector. We'll now start routing our gray duplex cable up to the front of the vehicle, to our engine bay, and to the top of the engine. For this application, we'll also use a pull wire or a piece of air tubing like this to assist in running the wire through the frame channel. Keep in mind when routing your wires to stay away from moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as exhaust. Now we can come out of the frame channel here at the back of the engine. We'll then run up the inner fender well here on the driver's side. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my wire here. With that done, we'll now take some zip ties and secure the wiring to the hitch as we route it over to the frame. We'll next need to locate a suitable spot to run our wire into the cabin of the vehicle. For this application, there are no manufacturer's grommets or access holes that we can run our wire through, so we'll need to make our own. Using a hole saw, one and three eighths bit, we're gonna go ahead and cut away the insulation around the point just above the hood release cable. This will then allow us to gain access directly to the sheet metal of the firewall where we can drill out a hole and install a grommet. For our application, we'll be using the snap ring grommet, part number SWC8055. 
With our grommet in place, we'll now move back to the engine compartment. Using a paint marker, we'll mark the gray duplex cable where it'll need to be split for the white wire to be run into the cabin and the black wire to stay in the engine compartment. Note, we'll only need this wire long enough to reach our circuit breaker and the cabin of the vehicle, so we'll go ahead and cut off the excess. Once we make a mark, I'm going to go ahead and route the wire back to gain easier access to it. Now we can strip it back. And cut off the excess sheathing. We'll then reroute the wire back into position and the white wire into the cabin. Next, we'll take the gray duplex cable that we just cut off and route it from inside the cabin back into the engine compartment. This will be the power and ground for our brake controller. We'll begin working with our brake controller pigtail. We'll wrap up the wires, leaving just what we need loose at the end. Next, we'll need to locate the brake signal wire from the brake switch. Once we locate it, we'll then go ahead and remove the connector from the brake switch and route it down to where we can gain easier access to it. Now we'll go ahead and use a utility knife, cut away some of the black electrical tape and wire loom so that we can access the necessary wire, which for this application will be a purple wire with a white stripe. We'll put the quick splice connector over the purple wire with a white tracer and then feed the red wire into the back of the quick splice connector. We'll crimp it down and close the clasp. We'll now need to hook up the blue wire from our pigtail with the white wire we ran from the seven pole connector. We'll cut off any excess, strip back both the blue wire from the brake controller pigtail and the white wire, use the yellow butt connector provided with our install kit and secure the two together. Next, we have two more wires to hook up. This will be the black and white wire that we ran into the engine bay. So we'll go ahead and strip back the gray sheathing, strip back the both wires, and then use yellow butt connectors to connect black to black and white to white. Now with all the connections made, we'll go ahead and wrap it up with some black electrical tape to help clean up our install look. We'll return the brake controller plug into the connector. Next, we'll go ahead and mount the brake controller bracket. Using a couple self-tapping screws, we can mount it here to the bottom of the dash to the metal piece of trim that runs underneath. Now with our bracket mounted, we'll go ahead and take our brake controller pigtail and plug it into the back of our brake controller. We'll then take the two screws provided with the brake controller install kit and secure the brake controller to the bracket. Next, we'll go ahead and clean up the install look by securing our wires up underneath the dash. Now we'll move back to the engine bay. Here we'll take the 20 amp breaker and secure it to the inner fender well. We can then take our 40 amp breaker and also secure it. Note, when mounting these, make sure it's low enough that it won't make contact with the hood strut rod once the hood is closed. Next we'll go ahead and take the gray duplex cable that we ran inside for power and ground to our brake controller and cut off any excess that won't be needed. We'll then mark the gray sheathing where we'll need to strip it back. With the gray sheathing stripped back, we'll go ahead and strip back the power wire and add a small ring terminal. 
We'll then connect it to the silver side of our 20 amp breaker and secure it with the star washer and nut. Next, we'll take the power wire that we ran in our great duplex cable from our seven pole connector, cut off any excess and add a small ring terminal. We'll then secure it to the silver side of our 40 amp breaker. We'll then take the white wire, route it to the manufacturer's ground point, cut off any excess, strip it back, and add a large ring terminal. We'll remove the ground stud, install the ring terminal, and then resecure the stud. Next, we'll need to make two power leads for our breakers. This will go from the copper side of the breakers to the positive battery terminal here at the fuse box. We'll go ahead and take the leftover black wire from our great duplex cable, strip back both ends, and add two small ring terminals. We'll then secure those ring terminals to our breakers and route it over to the positive battery terminal where we can cut the wire in half and strip back both ends, adding two large ring terminals. We'll then remove the nut from the positive battery post, install the ring terminals, and then resecure the nut. We'll close the clasp on the fuse box and we're now ready to hit the road as this will complete the install of our Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller part number 90885 in conjunction with the e-trailer universal installation kit for brake controllers part number ETB C7 on our 2010 Ford Explorer.